Welcome everyone. Today we'll be talking about the fundamentals of engineering statics topic, specifically trusses and the method of sections. Generally, there are two ways to solve truss problems depending on the problem layout. You can either use method of sections or method of joints. In my experience, method of sections is the approach that is more often favorable for the problems that are given on the FE exam. It's also the approach that I find a lot of students have trouble with. So we'll review it and break it down into some steps here today. We're starting with this problem here and we can see that um, we have a simple truss with two different supports and a point load applied at point E. And we're trying to find the force in the internal member between D and E. So our first step is to identify our supports. Now, if you have a chart handy, it, that makes it pretty easy. We can quickly identify this is a pin support, this is a roller support, and we can see what the reactions at those points are. If you don't have a chart, which this isn't in the handbook, um, you can identify what kinds of support reactions you'll have uh, based on which type of motion is limited at a particular support. So if we look here at G, we have a roller support, and clearly a roller will allow whatever's resting on it to translate in the X direction but not translate in the Y direction. So for that reason, we're going to have a support reaction in the Y direction at G. Likewise at A, we have a pin support, which will not allow translation in either direction. It will allow rotation about it, but no translation. And since it's constraining, translation in both those directions will have reactionary forces in both those directions. Now we can replace our supports with reactionary forces. And you'll see we'll have this kind of set up, and we can give these labels to make it a little bit easier for ourselves. So we'll call this AX and AY and GY. And now we want to solve for these reactionary forces. And remember, at this point, we're only considering our external forces. So our support reactions and this 35 kilonewton point load here, we're not worrying about those internal member forces. So we have our three equilibrium equations that we can always use, the sum of the forces in the x, the sum of the forces in the y, and the sum of the moments about a point. And since this truss is a static structure, we know that those three equations will always equal zero because we're in static equilibrium. So if we start with sum of the forces in the x direction, our only external force in the x is ax. As we just said, that equals zero. And therefore, we know that ax will equal zero. Now, if we consider some of the forces in the y direction, we'll see that this unfortunately won't tell us a whole lot. We have AY, which is, we're assuming positive going upward, our 35,000 Newton point load, which is going down, and then GY, which is going up, and all of that equals zero. And we're making the assumption that these forces are in the positive upward direction. If we get a negative as a result, It'll just mean that these are actually pointing downward, but for now this assumption's fine. But we could see that now we have one equation with two unknowns, so we can't solve this. So we'll really need to pull in our third equation, some of the moments, in order to figure out the two vertical support reactions. So now the question is where to take a moment about. We generally want to take a moment about a point where one of our unknown forces is acting. So either A or G. And the reason for this is that when we take the moment about that point, the force crossing through the point will have no impact on the moment. So we can choose either one, it doesn't matter here. I'm gonna choose G. And if we take the moment about G, we see that GY passes right through G, so there's a zero moment there. And for our purposes, we'll assume that a clockwise moment is negative. So now to really take the moment, we just need to consider this point load. So we have 35,000 Newtons acting with a moment arm distance of 20 meters away. And about point G, this is going counterclockwise. So it's positive, so we can see we don't have to do anything with the sign there. And AX, of course, we know it's zero already, but its line of action is crossing through G, so there's no moment there. And then AY is our unknown, and it is acting from 60 meters away. And of course, about point G, that's making a clockwise motion, so it's a negative moment, and our total moment equals zero. So now we can do some simple math here, right? And we can see that AY is 35,000 newtons times 20 meters divided by 60 meters. And we'll see that our meters will cancel out. And we'll be left with AY equals about 11.7 kilonewtons 
or 11,700 newtons. And now we can take this and we can go back to our sum of the forces in the y and we can substitute it in and just solve for gy. Again, pretty simple math. And we'll see that gy is around 23.3 kilonewtons. Now, we might not need both of these support reactions to solve this problem, but it's good to have these. And it's good to know, you know how to solve all of our reactionary forces. So now that we've solved for our forces, our third step is to apply a cut. And this is really the heart of the method of sections approach. So we want to apply a cut through the truss and our cut must cross through less than or equal to three members. Why three members? Well, we have, you'll remember, three equilibrium equations. So at most, we can only have three unknowns that we can solve for. Now, we're trying to solve for the force in member DE, and our cut should always cross through the member that we're trying to solve for. So it's got to cross through DE, and it can only cross through a max of three members, so two others. So we can see the only way we can draw a line through it is this red line that we have here, cutting DF, DE, and CE in half. Now, this line doesn't necessarily have to be a straight line. In this problem, it's pretty easy, so we'll use it that way. And now our next step is to decide which side of the cut we want to solve with. So we have our left side here, side one, and our right side here, side two. This is, again, an arbitrary choice. You can use either one. I'm going to choose side one because we have our 35 kilonewton force on side two, so why have to deal with another force there? So we'll choose the left-hand side to make it simpler. And now our free body diagram will look like what you see here. So you can see that now we've included those internal forces. And now we get to our fourth and final step, which is to write the equilibrium equation strategically. So here you want to use your three equations to solve for the thing that you care about. In our case, it's DE. So this is where a little bit of strategy comes in. We want to start by analyzing the components of all of our forces. So our support reaction is purely vertical. Our CE and DF internal member forces are both horizontal. And then DE is a force at an angle. So it has both horizontal and vertical components. So if we look here at our zoomed in view, DE is represented by the dotted line. We can see that we can break that down into DE X component and DE Y component. And if you're familiar with breaking down vectors into x and y components, it should be pretty simple for you to see that DE x component is just the full force DE cosine theta, and DE y is DE sine theta, where theta is this angle over here. So we're just breaking that up. So if we think of our three options, some of the forces in the X, Y, and some of the moments, if we start with some of the forces in the X, the forces that we'll be considering are CE, DF, and this X component of DE. So we'll have three unknowns in one equation. We won't be able to solve for any of them. So some of the forces in the X doesn't help us. If we instead look at some of the forces in the Y, we will be working with our reaction force here at our support, and we'll be working with DEY. And there are no other vertical components here. So we'll have one unknown, DEY, which also happens to be a component of the force that we're trying to solve for, and one known in a single equation. So we can solve that. And there isn't necessarily a single way to solve this, but I think this seems to be the simplest way. So if we do some of the forces in the Y here, we'll have 11.7 kilonewtons upward minus DEY downward. That will equal zero. And we'll know right off the bat that DEY is 11.7 kilonewtons. It is equal to that support reaction at A. So now we need to use this relationship here to kind of trace back to what DE is now that we know what DEY is. So to do that, we really need to consider the trigonometry here. So on the right, um, what I've done is just broken down geometrically what this looks like. So if we follow the path of DE here, it goes between points D and E. The width is half the distance where D lands between C and E. So it's 10. The height is 18. And as we said, DEY, when this is theta, is DE sine theta. So if we have DEY, which is 11.7 kilonewtons, 
DE is what we're trying to find. Sine theta we could solve a lot of ways, but if we just do it simply geometrically, we know that sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse of this shape. So the opposite to that angle is 18 meters. The hypotenuse is the square root of 10 squared plus 18 squared. So really, if we solve for DE, we're going to have DE is 11.7 kilonewtons times 10 squared plus 18 squared all over 18. And this will lead us to DE equals 13.38 kilonewtons. And now we've solved our problem. Now you should keep in mind that in this particular problem, some of the forces in the y was the simplest approach, but again, we have to choose our equilibrium equation strategically. In a different problem, some of the moments might be the best approach, or some of the forces in the x. So it really depends. But just to recap what we did, first we identified our support reactions, then we solved for those support reaction forces. We applied a cut in the truss through a maximum of three members, and then we selected a side of the truss to solve for, we redrew our free body diagram for that side of the truss, now considering the internal forces, and then we used our equilibrium equation strategically to solve for the internal member force that we cared about for this particular problem. Enjoying these videos? Follow the links in the description below to find out how you can reach out for personal tutoring, like and subscribe to get notified when new videos drop, and comment with suggestions for future topics.